Welcome back. Today we're going to continue looking at some rotational dynamics. We're going to delve a little bit deeper into torque. Now previously we looked at how we can apply our understanding of torque uh, to a basic takedown technique. Today we're going to uh, use the same concepts, but instead of looking at a takedown, we're going to look at a, a joint locking technique instead. And this is going to be a little more subtle. It's really going to test your understanding of the, the physics that's involved. So what is involved? Well, we need to understand torque. And torque, of course, if you've seen our previous lessons, torque is the result of both a distance and a force. And this distance is the distance from the axis of rotation. So if we have, say, a rod that's pivoting around an axis, well, in order to maximize our torque, I can apply a force that will, will bring this object into rotation anywhere uh, along this rod, but to maximize our torque, I want to maximize the distance uh, from the pivot to the applied force. Okay, so that's our, our principle that we're making use of. Now uh, let's go uh, meet up with Justin and we're going to look at a joint locking technique and we're going to see this concept in action. As I said, this is a little more subtle. It's a little more difficult to see what's going on. We're going to break it down for you step by step. So what we're going to do, we're going to use our covering block, which we've looked at previously. He throws a punch, I, I block, I deflect, and now of course when we're using the covering block, the strategy that's involved is to stick with the person and foul them in. He's not going to leave his punch out there, so when he punches and he draws back, I foul him in. I'm going to snake around, and I can use my joint lock to take him to the ground, or I could use my, my joint lock to throw him into a wall or into an object. You have many options. Uh, now on to some of the physics that's involved here. We want to maximize our leverage so that it's as effortless as possible to get him to bend. So where do we want to apply our force? Well, the first question that we can ask, do we want to apply our force closer with our hand, closer to the shoulder or to the elbow? And if you try this with a partner, you'll see if I push on his shoulder, uh, it's going to prove to be much more difficult than if I move out to his elbow. Why is that? Is this the distance that we want to maximize to increase our torque, to increase our leverage? Well, in fact, it isn't. What happens, actually, uh, is a byproduct of changing this distance. Okay? So let's do a little thought experiment here to really get to the bottom of what's going on. I want you to imagine that his upper arm is like a bolt. And I'm trying to crank the bolt. And in doing so, the bolt is attached to his body. It doesn't crank. It ends up turning him over. And now what's the lower arm? So this is our bolt. This is a wrench. And how do you create greater leverage? Well, if you have a longer wrench, you're going to have greater leverage. If you can apply your force farther down on the wrench, it's going to be much easier. So let's see what's happening if I'm at his shoulder Look at where the applied force is. It's closer to his elbow because my, my elbow right now is touching his forearm, but again, closer to the elbow. Watch what happens when I move my arm closer to his elbow. Our, our point of contact on his lower arm changes, and so does our, our leverage. So does the torque that we're producing. So you want to apply the force closer to the elbow. It's not this distance that increases your leverage, however. It's this one. And uh, one last time, we'll run through the technique. I perform my block, I snake underneath, you might be throwing a strike in here at the same time to distract him and soften him up, and then I can step around, and we could take him to the ground, or an alternate ending, one final option for you. Same principles are involved here, though, as I start to get him to bend and fold up, I can move behind, and now we have a, sort of an interrogation hold that we could apply. So there's a couple options for you, and there's a little bit more insight into the physics that's involved within that technique. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know if you have any questions, and we'll see you soon. Take care.